Hello and welcome back to another Pharaoh on Shell product Shizzle. Um, today we're going to be talking about Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Um, today we're going to be looking at episodes six and seven. I'm going to break it down into two episode chunks. I tried to do six, seven, eight, nine, and six, seven, eight, and nine all up in one episode, but I only got to up to episode five, <laughs> and it was like a long ass video. So. We're going to try to keep it snappy. It's going to be snappy in this one. So, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, right. Okay, episode six. So, it's the Hughes' story. This is the one with the sister, I think, that's in the courtroom. And it's like, you, do you know me? You don't know me? This is where, this is what you, this is what it means to be erratic, bitch. We won that, um, episode. So, Tony Hughes. So, as a baby, he was like, got offered the short short straw. So he had an infection and the family's OBGYN or doctor prescribed him a drug that caused hearing loss in babies, which then in turn caused him to become completely deaf. So this is what the free clinics were doing back in the day. They were given drugs to babies that were causing harm, bodily harm. Permanent damage as well, like that's mad. So we fast forward to him in the gay club, he's having the best time of his life. Um, listening to them, guessing the vibrations, he can feel the vibrations, and that's how deaf people dance, which I think is really, really cool, actually. Um, and then he's basically, he has his little clique, his two gay best friends, who are also deaf. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, um, his friend gets murdered. It's not Jeffrey Dahmer, though. Um, and then he meets Jeffrey Dahmer. And then they start dating. I'm thinking, oh, okay. This, um, Jeffrey, not Jeffrey Hughes. <laughs> this, um, Tony Hughes is going to change Jeffrey for the good. We're going to see no more killings. That's not the case. Um, so after a few dates, they're going on, like, fo they have, like, photo dates. They have, um... Well, uh, photo shoot dates they have um, this is where I think where he starts to take pictures I oh, know it wasn't because it was the 14 year old boy as well Jesus Christ it's too much too much inf info um okay so he then after a few dates they dating they get to know each other they're liking each other they're practically boyfriend and boyfriend at this point um Jeffrey brings Tony back after a few dates um and they play this game and when it gets to like the vortex and that's where Jeffrey Dahmer loses his shit. But then Tony's like, it doesn't have to be this way, grabs his hand, and then they cuddle. And so then, <clears throat> um, so I just had some food. Um, so they go into the other room, they cuddle, um, they wake up the next morning. Tony's like, oh, I have to get ready to go um, to work. Um, and then Jeffrey Dahmer is like, don't go, Jack, don't go. Um, oh, okay, so then he basically leaves and then everyone basically in the world is like breathing a sigh of relief until he comes back again because he forgot his keys. How are you gonna leave without your keys? But anyway, I do it all the time. But anyway, um, he comes back. Jeffrey Dahmer has the hammer in his hand, and then hits him over the head, and then Tony ends up missing. Another victim. And then his mother's um, growing worrisome because his son usually always comes and says goodbye before he he goes off to university, and. Um, she, she tells the police this, but obviously she's never met um, his boyfriend Jeffrey, so he doesn't. She doesn't know to go there. So then the mother goes to the police, and then the police are like, "Are you sure he just didn't leave?" She's like, "That's not his, in his character. That's not in his nature." Then she starts making a petition to help for a search a search petition to go and find her son. 
And I think at the end he eats um, a piece of Tony. But it's un- unconfirmed. That's at the end of episode 6. <clears throat> okay, so then episode 7 is Tracy... Not Tracy. We go back to the- Tracy's escape. And then it's about Glenda's viewpoint, which is the neighbour who called the police on the for the 14 year old boy that was um, killed by Jeffrey Dahmer in the end. Um, back from episode two, so Glenn, so this is Glenda's viewpoint of what she's heard over the past couple of months, of or years of this guy just killing people, and the smell, and constantly, 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 constantly calling the police and telling them something fishy's going on over there, and constantly being unheard and not being listened to and for years and years and years and years and then now that Tracy's escaped and alerted the police and brought the police back now they found now they want to listen or they don't even want to listen so you start seeing the police notifying the families that you need to stop searching for your son because your son is dead because the funny thing is Jeffrey kept all the IDs of every single victim the or victim that he murdered so the governor and the mayor and the police department are all covering their 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 backs they're pointing the blame everywhere else um reverend jackson visits the milwaukee to hold these men accountable and put pressure on the government which is great and then the neighbor recounts her accounts of what ha- happened over the past couple of months the amount of time she's complained and to the building manager and the police and nobody did anything. Nobody wanted to listen to her. People just thought that she was just moaning for the sake of moaning. I was taking the words of this white man. Again, the police not listening to a person of colour because a white man is there. So his word must be true, must run straight, must be the thing that is, you know, right. Whereas in many cases, it's very, 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 very wrong. Um, so when she oh my god there was a part where she complained and got him evicted and so Jeffrey gets an eviction notice so then he makes her a sandwich of meat but won't tell her what type of meat it is which I found is disgusting how are you going to make someone a human sandwich and then not even tell them it's a human sandwich you all know it's a human sandwich Okay. Um, and he tries to make her eat the sandwich, but she says no. That's episode seven in a nutshell. Snappy, 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 snap, snappy. Episode eight. So his father speaks to his son to get to the reason as to why he did what he did. His mother gets handed by the reporters. His father said that he had the same. This was the weird. The father had the same type of feeling so he must have had that let me go back up that disease that mental thing um the splanchnophilia he must have had that but he never acted on it he always suppressed it but um you know this is what it is. Um, and then you find out that Jeffrey Dahmer gets 15 consecutive life sentences, which basically means he's, he was never going to get out of jail, ever. Episode 9, so that's episode, that's episode 8 in a nutshell. Basically, you get like the father's um, viewpoint I, I guess so episode 9 he tries to buy a razor blade in prison um, but he doesn't get it he's walking around like a shit does not think because he's getting fan mail and people sending him money and gifts and all kinds of shit stuff um, the Asian family tries to sue the police department for 10 million pounds but ends up settling for 850,000 pounds a civil lawsuit um, is made by the families 
um, so that all the prophets of the book that the father's writing about his son and you know his father and whatever um, will go to the families. The book doesn't really do that well. Um, oh, and then he gets stabbed in the neck. In the cafe, like in, I don't even know where it was in the prison, but he got he gets stabbed in the neck, but he survives. So he's still out there. So and around this and so this moving on to episode ten. So around this time, John Wayne, another serial killer that would kill like gay men and stuff, but I don't think they were of color specifically. They were like white gay men. Um, so he gets the sentence to death. And he killed 33 guys. Like, why is there not one of that? But Jesus. But anyway, he so Jeffrey Dahmer starts screwing with the inmates. Like, putting food on their chairs and doing pulling pranks like he's in some day camp. Like, girl, you're supposed to be reforming yourself. So you can come back into the world, into the world and into society. Be a civilised human being. <clears throat> Um, he says he was collect. Oh, he does say that he was collecting the body parts to make a life-size altar, like to the devil. That's why he was saving body parts. Like his mind was so twisted, it is unreal. And he thinks that he differs from Jeff from John Wayne, because John Wayne wouldn't admit to his um, killings and his wrongdoings, but because he admitted to it, he's different. Like, he's completely different. They're in two different lanes of murdering, of serial killers. He want, ends up wanting to, wanting to get baptised. His dad forgives him. And the fu- weird thing is, John Wayne gets executed the same day Jeffrey Dahmer gets baptised. And on that same day, there was a total eclipse. That's some devil-ish-ish, I swear. I don't know what kind of... I don't even know. That's mad. Oh, okay. So then on this episode, um, this child, this was a ten. Oh, I've gone through episode nine. Boom. Episode ten. So dun 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 finale. Um. I didn't realise I was just scrolling through these notes, cha. So I'm guessing like a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years later, there's a guy a black man Oh yeah, a black man took interest in Dharma and and finessed his and finessed his way into Finding out some research as to why Dharma is in here, why he's getting such um, fan mail and all this nonsense. He's, I th- he might be a little bit jealous, but he's also like, I can't be jealous of someone that's been put in prison because you're in prison. You didn't do anything great. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So basically, that same guy finds out what he's done and sees all the horrible things that he has done to his brothers, cousins, sons. And then he ends up setting up Jeffrey Dahmer. So Jeffrey Dahmer like used to clean the gyms, and the police officer brings him and his pers- and the person that he usually cleans the gyms with. So they're cleaning, 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 and then the police officer like, oh, there's someone new coming to join you today. Welcome them with open arms. And then the police officer leaves. So then uh, he goes in with the other person. And then he ends up killing him, and Jeffrey Dahmer's just hearing the screams and whatever. He just looks like, oh my god. And then carries on about his business. So I'm guessing it's a prison. Fights happen all the time. Then the man comes out, and then basically bludgeons um, Jeffrey Dahmer to death, and then he basically dies. The father gets called to the hospital. He confirms the death of his son. He cries, has, has a little funeral thing. Um, he gets cremated, yada yada yada. 
Glenda was pushing for the government to put him in Memorial Park in place of the building because obviously everyone ended up getting evicted from the building that Jeffrey Dahmer did all these mass murderers, murders and they got rehoused and they were basically doing nothing with the building. They ended up tearing the building down. She wanted to put a memorial park for the um, victims so that like the families can go there and remember. Um, but it was never built. The government decided that we're not building it. They're not building it. Because of whatever reason. It's mad. Madness. Okay, so the names of the victims and ages. So we have Stephen Hicks. So remember these names, honey. We've got to remember these names. This is history. This goes down in the history books. So Stephen Hicks was 18 years old. First victim. Stephen Twomey. 24 years old, second victim. So the first victim was the hitchhiker, second victim was the other accident in the hotel room where he drugged himself and the other person and bludgeoned Stephen Twomey to death. Jamie Doxtutter, 14 years old, who was the brother of the other 14 year old who escaped. Um, Richard Guerrero, 22 years old. Anthony Sears, 24 years old. Raymond Smith, 32 years old. Edward Smith, 27 years old. Ernest Miller, 23 years old. David Thomas, 22 years old. Curtis Strauter, 17 years old. Errol Lindsay, 19 years old. Tony Hughes, 31 years old. Conorak Synthesomphone... 14 years old. Oh no, Conorak was the one that was the brother. I don't know who the other 14 year old was then. Matt Turner, 20 years old. Jeremiah Weinberger, 23 years old. Oliver Lacey, 24 years old. And Joseph Braidhoft, 25 years old. Or young, I should be saying. Years young. And they all got their lives. Um taken way too soon way too soon he should have been stopped after the first second and even third like i find it crazy that the justice system the police who are supposed to be out there serving and protecting weren't serving and protecting they were just letting this man run a riot and for what it's actually disgusting and they need to be held accountable because I, I remember there was one part where like um, where Glenda was getting an award and there was like hardly any like press or whatever for her attempts in trying to um, get police officers to arrest this man and do a proper investigation in his apartment. And then the officers who let the 14 year old go back into the apartment and get murdered gets an award as well. Like, what kind of messed up nonsense is that? And they they got suspended leave with pay. Like, oh, this documentary is like, it's such an important thing for people to watch because it's not just about um, this man killing gay black men. It's so much deeper than that. It's also about, like, the social injustice in the justice system and in the world today like it goes runs so much deeper so much deeper it's it's such a, a program that you have to watch and it's the second most watched um, documentary series on netflix to date i haven't got into the jeffrey dharma tapes i need a break i need a break i need a break <laughs> um but yes we shall get into it on another episode of Vera Angel. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you like this. If you want me to review other things, um, let me know. I probably should have done this closer to when I watched it, but um, I got bombarded with work and I had no time and I was just too tired. Um, I'm going to be pushing out some more videos, like louds. <laughs> I'm going to try to do it as much as possible, as humanely possible, because <laughs> ciao. It'd be long. But anyway, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. 
Um, catch you on the next one. Bye.